The government is trying a new tactic to get prescription pills off the street. It's allowing pharmacies and clinics to accept unused medicine. Here with a look at this new regulation, we're joined by The Wall Street Journal's Devlin Barrett in Washington, D.C. Devlin, thanks for joining us. Hey, Sarah. So how does this normally work when you have leftover pills? What are you supposed to do with them? Well, there hasn't really been a good way to dispose of them. They, some places have what's called drug take-back days in which you go to a local police station or a DEA office and bring your unused prescription drugs. But that's a, a you're asking individuals to be pretty proactive. And, and so what the change they're trying to make happen now is to, to make it so that individuals can return drugs to basically the place they got them, which is the pharmacies or in some cases hospitals. And the idea being, get these drugs out of medicine cabinets so that kids don't get, grab them, so that they're not stolen, uh, which does happen a fair bit, and uh, try and try and reduce the just sort of floating supply that's just out there in people's homes. It does seem like this still puts it a lot on parents, on adults, to go back to the pharmacy and return them. I have a feeling there are some parents who just kind of tend to keep these around, you know, in case they happen to have another injury or have another illness or some kind of pain where they would need to use these again. Well, right. The classic example is you go get a root canal or something from the dentist and they give you a 30-day supply of, let's say, Vicodin, and you just hold on to however many pills you don't use. Um, first of all, most, most drug experts think that's not a great idea because, one, you shouldn't be deciding when else to take Vicodin for what else. But it's also become a problem because these, these pills are so addictive that what you're seeing is as, as thousands of people die every year from painkiller overdoses, some of those people are getting started down this path, uh, drug experts say, by essentially pilfering the family medicine cabinet. And so what they're trying to do is get, especially the painkillers, out of circulation in the home in the hopes that especially teenagers don't use them. But it's not just teenagers. There's plenty of older folks, frankly adults, who try this stuff, like it, and, and get hooked before they realize they've been hooked. Yeah, that's a really good point, Devlin. So what's the early reaction to this change? Are people encouraged by it? Do they think it's going to work? It's interesting. You're seeing some of the, the victims' families' advocates uh, very positive about it. Others are questioning whether, well, if you, if you make a drop box in, in a pharmacy, does that just create another opportunity to steal or to misuse the drugs since they're even less traceable than the stuff behind the shelves? We're still waiting to get some real word from the industry as to which direction they plan to go with this. You know, the industry has always been able to say, well, look, the government doesn't even let us do that anyway, so you shouldn't really be asking us to take your drugs back. Now they're not going to have the government as, a, let's say, a, an excuse for not doing this. So if they're not going to do it, they're going to have to have their own reasons for not doing it. And like I said, we're still waiting to see how the industry exactly responds to this new ability. All right, Devlin, really interesting story. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Sarah.